Ciao, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video today. We are doing three Mediterranean diet recipes. Squash inspired. <laughs> Squash and pumpkins and just all of the beautiful fall vegetables. So I think these recipes will be perfect for you to make this fall and winter. Let's talk about the three recipes that we'll be making. Recipe number one is going to be using a beautiful acorn squash. I love these guys. And I see a lot of recipes for stuffed acorn squashes, but today we're gonna do stuffed acorn squash rings. Mix some harissa and honey, and I feel like it'll be great paired and glazed on these acorn squash rings, and then also made with that beautiful rice and roasted grapes. Recipe number two, I love quiches and tarts, and I think it's a perfect meal, the perfect lunch, dinner, breakfast, packed with protein. All these filling flavors and today we're going to be making a pecorino rosemary honey nut squash quiche i have a summer version of it with zucchini and i thought what better to do than make a more fall winter version of it with some squash and lastly we're going to be making pumpkin butter i'm going to cook down some of the pumpkin puree I'm gonna use the rest of it for other recipes, but some of the pumpkin puree that we make today, I'm gonna to cook it down with some apple juice, spices, oranges, vanilla, maple syrup, and create the most luxurious pumpkin butter that's good in both savory sweet things. And I'm gonna make an epic sandwich, an epic turkey prosciutto, pumpkin butter, smoked gouda, and apple brown butter sandwich. Caroline, could you make a longer title? The answer is always yes, I could. We need to turn the oven on and get to roasting. So let's hop in to recipe number one. For recipe number one, we're gonna start off with turning on the oven at 425. So for this recipe, I wanted to use some spiciness. Um, I've used Teresa before and I wanted to use it again because clearly I have not been using it since the first time I've used it because I don't like spicy. But I know so many people do like like very like spicy hot. We're gonna be making my version of hot honey with harissa honey. So I have some delicious honey and harissa is going to be the star of the show today in this dish. But something I think is really fun is roasting grapes. I like like a bursting, super crunchy grape, but all of these have gotten mushy. And so instead of pitching them because I don't enjoy eating them anymore, which you know me, I don't throw away anything. I'm gonna roast them. A drizzle of olive oil, big sprinkle of salt all over the top and some freshly cracked pepper. Roll them around and get them all coated. And we are gonna throw these into the oven and let them roast for about 15, 20 minutes. Next thing is gonna be cutting acorn squash and like I said it's very popular to stuff acorn squash halves but I think that's too big and a little bit awkward so I'm going to start with just being in control with the knife don't be scared to kind of use your strength twist it around go slowly in there and I'm going to make about an inch and a half rings perfect sharp knife really helps you do the trick here. You wanna make sure to always have your knives sharp. Honestly, it's more dangerous, believe it or not, to have dull knives than to have sharp knives. And with the scraps, I'm just gonna throw them on a different tray and roast up the scraps because that's also just nice to have like roasted cube squash ready to go. And so now we have these beautiful rings of acorn squash and you just take a spoon and spoon out the insides into a bowl and they should come out super, super easy, just like that. Now you have like a little circle. We're gonna put the beautiful squash on a plate and then fill it in the center with that beautiful rice mixture and it's gonna be super fun. I have six rings of acorn squash and look, it's like a little pretty flower. So now we're gonna go ahead and kind of glaze them. So in this bowl, I'm gonna combine the star ingredient, which is this gorgeous harissa paz garlic and peppers and coriander and caraway, and then equal parts honey to harissa. And just to thin it out a little bit and make sure it gets a beautiful crusty brown on the edges, we're gonna go in with about a teaspoon of olive oil, a little bit of salt, and then I'm gonna add in some smoky paprika just for a little depth of flavor, as well as some za'atar, because I want some herbs going on here. So we got that za'atar, the thyme, the oregano, the sesame seeds. I think that complements everything super well. And then because sumac is in za'atar, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little splash of sumac. And we're just gonna stir that all together. And so now we have this harissa honey za'atar smoky delicious goodness. The beautiful glaze is ready. So I'm gonna take a ring and kind of smush it in and just make sure each side gets a nice um, douse of glaze, kind of rub it around with your fingers maybe. And there you have it. It's the perfect harissa honey glazed acorn squash ring. 
acorn squash rings have been coated and so they're ready to go in the oven and the grapes are actually perfectly ready to come out. To make the rice, we're literally just gonna repeat all the ingredients and put it instead of a bowl to glaze the squash into a pot to glaze the granules of rice. So starting off with liquid gold to coat the entire bottom. The only difference is we're not gonna add the honey until last. We are gonna go ahead and toast the rice in the harissa. Just like before, we're gonna do a little splash of sumac, a little splash of smoked paprika, and then a little bit of black pepper, because if we don't already have enough pepper going on in here, and then a little bit of zatar. I'm gonna heat this on the stove over medium heat. Once it's been heating for about two, three minutes and the oil and the harissa come together and get a little bit loose, we're gonna add in the rice, toast the rice. I'm gonna use vegetable broth today. That's totally optional. I just think the more flavor, the better. ready to pull this dish together and I'm so excited. So the rice was 90% cooked the last time I tasted it. It was basically al dente, but I turned off the heat and I'm letting it sit for about five more minutes to kind of steam and make sure it fully finishes cooking. And then we're gonna fluff it with a few things, the roasted grapes. And then we're also going to add some pistachios. You could use walnuts, pecans, pumpkin seeds would obviously be genius here, especially the pumpkin seeds we got from the center of those acorn squashes. And then some fresh pomegranate aerials. I really, really, really recommend, I know it's annoying, and I say do a lot of things yourself, but it's amazing the difference in taste when you do things yourself. So doing your own pomegranate versus just buying a container of the aerials already out of the pomegranate, they taste so much more fresh, so much more full of flavor and so what I do is get a huge bowl of water and break apart the pomegranate in the water one so the juice doesn't fly everywhere all over your outfit because I can't tell you how many times I've had pomegranate juice on an outfit trying to get the aerials out <laughs> and then I also really recommend that because what happens is the white stuff that's in between all those pomegranates floats to the top so you can just easily skim off the top of the water with all the things that you don't want then you're left with a beautiful bowl of delicious pomegranates I'm gonna go ahead and add in the honey while it's still hot so that way the honey evenly spreads out and it just doesn't clump up if it was colder. Pistachios and now the roasted grapes. If you didn't wanna do roasted grapes but you really wanted something sweet in here but it was just something much easier than roasting grapes, I would recommend raisins, dates, dried figs, some kind of yummy dried fruit. And then to make this more of a complete meal if you just didn't want it to be a side dish but you want it to be a lunch or a dinner, some ground beef in the rice would be great. Ground lamb, sausage, pork, you know, beef, even turkey, anything ground. If you wanted to keep it vegetarian, vegan, beans, chickpeas would be fantastic here. Lentils with that rice would be really, really good. White beans would be good. Like again, I'm just giving you guys a beautiful idea of squash roasted stuffed with rice using some flavors, but you take that and run with it and use your own things. If you don't wanna do roasted grapes, do roasted cranberries. If you don't wanna do fruit at all because you think fruit doesn't belong in a savory dish, X the fruit out. Just trying to get you guys creative. Modern Mediterranean cooking. I'm so excited to finally taste the harissa honey roasted acorn squash stuffed with the most delicious rice. Mm. <clears throat> oh, it's spicy. Spicy! Wow, that's so good. The acorn squash, so delicious. The rice is cooked to perfection. It's the perfect contrast of texture, that chewy rice with the super soft acorn squash. It's the perfect portion. One more bite. Mm. And then you get a burst of the sweet roasted grape or that pomegranate with that crunch of the salty pistachio with the zatar, the harissa, a little bit of smokiness. You can even do like a yogurt drizzle on top if you wanted to. You could add some like lebna on top of this or with this with cheese on top. There's so many variations to make this recipe. It's delicious. Time to clean up and move on to recipe number two. Next is the adorable honey nut. I'm gonna cut right through the center and cut on a diagonal to miss the uh, hardest part, which is the stem. Because it's such a little guy, these are much easier to cut. And they're basically just tiny butternut squashes, but a little bit more flavor in my opinion than butternut squash and a little bit more sweet. Perfect tray of honey nut squashes going in. The 
before we continue, I had to make a little cappuccino, little latte moment, pumpkin spice. I'm obsessed with it lately. But anyways, let's talk about recipe number two. For recipe number two, we are gonna be using pecorino. My mom got this in Tuscany and she brought it home for me. You could use parmigiano or pecorino. They're different, but in a lot of ways they are the same. They're the, kind of the same type of cheese. All I recommend is just trying to get a good chunk of real pecorino or real parmigiano and grate it yourself. I promise it is completely different. So we're gonna start off with grating this beautiful pecorino in the Vitamix. Making a pastry crust is so simple. Um, I make them all the time and it's really fun to make pastry crusts. Crusts? <laughs> crusts, you can use all kinds of things. You could use it like I'm using it today for a quiche, you could use it for a pie, a tart, you could use it for a galette. I love this pastry crust, it's delicious, it's herbaceous, it's everything you want. So right now I'm picking off two sprigs of whole rosemary. Oh, it smells so good. And I'm going to finely chop that fresh rosemary, about a big tablespoon worth going into a bowl. Big pinch of salt, but not too big because we're also going to be adding the pecorino in there, which is quite salty. 150 grams of flour going in. A cup and a half of flour has been added. You can use spelt. That's one of my favorite flours all purpose. You can use a whole wheat pastry flour. If you wanna use a really like more nutty flour, like a rye or something like that, I would do maybe half a cup of rye to a cup of all purpose flour. And if you're gluten free, I would just try it with all purpose flour that is gluten free version. I am using unsalted Irish butter. The thing with pastry crust is you have to work kind of quickly once you add in that butter because especially with Irish butter, because it's a little bit softer, or it gets a little bit softer more quickly than American butter. I'm just gonna cube this up. You can use the food processor, you could use a pastry cutter. There's a lot of different things that you could use. I'm using my hands today. <laughs> so I have the butter added to the flour and a few ice cubes with water because you want ice cold water. So I'm gonna go in and just kind of break the butter down into the flour. It's like literally just massaging it. We are reaching where if I clump it together with my hand, it's coming together quite nice. And it's starting to form a ball like this, like a dough. So I'm gonna take about two tablespoons of water and try to, not the ice cube, <laughs> and try to get it all together to come to a ball. It looks really, really good. All right, I'm gonna get it onto the countertop here and kind of make it into a disc. If we don't wanna work it anymore, it's definitely gotten way too warm. <laughs> so I'm gonna put plastic wrap over this and throw it in the fridge to chill for about 30 minutes to an hour. Hi, so this is Caroline in the future right now, rolling out the beautiful rosemary pastry crust because I screwed up in the original video. Imagine that. So the original recipe you saw me just making, um, I worked on the pastry crust too much. I was multitasking, I was talking too much, and the butter just got too melted. I didn't roll it out really well, and then when I put it in the wrong baking dish, it also just looked pretty terrible, so I thought I'd use the correct quiche or tart pan this time instead of the one that I'd used in that original clip you were just watching and this way you should be blind baking it so I should have put down parchment and some heavy beads or beans or something to bake it but I just went in with a fork and pricked it and threw it in the oven and yeah we all make mistakes so now back to the original clip with the filling we're gonna work on the cutest honey nut squashes ever that have been roasted now and fully cooled cut off this part, which is all the seeds. And so you're left with this yummy part and just go along the edges, leaving almost as much flesh as you can and cut off the skin. And then you're left like with this big chunk and I'm just gonna cube it up. And that way there's like nice chunks of delicious squash all throughout the filling. It's like a concentrated flavor of butternut squash. So I have a bowl of the cubed honey nut squash ready to go. And we're gonna go ahead and do the rest of the filling now. I just pulled out the crust and it's perfectly par-baked. So we're gonna not drop an egg, but crack an egg. We're actually gonna crack six of them. A cup of Greek yogurt. I'm using whole milk because queen of full fat, as you guys know. Into the bowl with the egg, five ounces, and then we need six, seven, eight. So three more ounces from this one. I'm going to add in a half a cup of this grated pecorino. Add in a bunch of cracked black pepper. Taking all of the leaves of the rosemary off the stem, just like this. 
so easy. I love rosemary because it's nice and big. It's not like thyme where you like need to have patience for it. A chop. I'm gonna add that in. And I forgot one more thing, which is about two tablespoons of olive oil. And now I'm gonna whisk it all till it's nice and smooth and one gorgeous filling. And back with the updated version. Um, yeah, kind of screwed up on this again. <laughs> Clearly, I just can't get this recipe right for you guys. It's definitely more rustic, and it did sink a little bit because I did not roll the crust out thin enough, and I didn't blind bake it with those dried beans or with a, like those beadlets. But either way, it still turns out delicious. It's so flaky and delicious, and how many times can I say the word delicious? That is what this tart is. I'm calling it a tart because a quiche would be a little bit more light and fluffy, but because I didn't use creme fraiche or heavy cream and I chose to do the Greek yogurt, it's a little bit more dense, but still so delicious. The pecorino, the big cracks of black pepper, all the rosemary, all the sage. You can use any squash you like. Here, I ended up using a Asian squash because that's what I had on hand. The honey nut also was delicious in this. You could use delicate cotta, butternut, whatever, whatever squashes you have in your home that you want to use up. This is a great vessel, a quiche, a tart to use up those delicious squashes during this season. And I really, really hope you try this recipe. I'm sorry I screwed up, <laughs> but if you're still here, I promise you it is delicious. It just hits the spot. The crust is so flaky. I really recommend adding those herbs in. So anyways, let's move on to recipe number three. For recipe number three, we're going to be making our homemade pumpkin butter. And so I have half of the smaller half of the roasted pumpkin and I'm just gonna get all those seeds and centers out like we've done for literally all the squashes at this point. And you can totally use canned pumpkin. I just wanted to show you how easy and even more flavorful it could be making your own because it's really not that hard. You just have to cut it in half and roast it instead of opening up a can. So to make this, you'd use 15 ounces of pumpkin in a can or we're gonna be seeing how much this pumpkin turns into. And obviously pumpkin doesn't come pureed. <laughs> it's not already pureed, it's kind of more stringy. And so you'd need to put it through the feud, the feud processor. I don't know what feud we're having here. You'd put it through the food processor or I will put it in a blender once this is done and all the flavors have infused. Take the insides just like this and blend it all up. And that way you have a puree to add to if you want to make a pasta filling, if you want to make pumpkin bread, pumpkin cakes, pumpkin cinnamon rolls, like any way you'd use a canned pumpkin, you now have your own homemade puree. So it looks like this little half is going to be a perfect 15, which would make me so happy. So with the pumpkin in the saucepan to make this pumpkin butter, you just need about 30 minutes of patience. We're going to do a pinch of salt to bring out all the flavors. Our liquids include apple juice. So I'm going to use a third a cup of apple juice. And then I'm gonna do two thirds cup of maple syrup. And it would lend probably to more dessert recipes. You're gonna have the orange and the apple and all the spices, the maple, all the flavors ready to go in a pumpkin puree. So it's kind of the perfect thing to add to your yogurts, to your oatmeal, on toast. There's just so many ways to use it. Normally I don't add vanilla before cooking something on a stove, I'd add it at the end. But because we're cooking this low and slow for 30 minutes, we're gonna simmer it, the vanilla will do its thing and not get bitter or burnt. It's about two tablespoons of pumpkin pie spice. You could use your own spices, let's say if you wanted it more nutmeggy, if you wanted extra cardamom-y, extra clovey, you can play around with the spices. I'm even gonna add a little bit more cinnamon. Next, I'm gonna go in with some orange zest, just a little bit, because orange and apple and cinnamon and pumpkin and maple and all the things, they just complement each other so well. It smells so good. Put that in there. But I'm just gonna do the juice of half of an orange. I don't wanna make it too overpoweringly orange. I'm going to put a lid on this now. Let it simmer for 30 minutes and then we'll throw it in the blender and have the perfect apple butter. I just realized I said apple butter, I meant pumpkin butter. To highlight this absolutely stunning, beautiful, delicious, tastes like heavenly Thanksgiving, Christmas, happy holiday times, pumpkin butter. <laughs> the orange with all of the spices, the vanilla, the pumpkin, the maple, the apple, tasting better than anything I've ever bought at store bought. We're gonna make a sweet and savory sandwich. I know you guys are so sick of everything sweet and savory. Well, I'm not. <laughs> Starting off with a pan that's been preheating for about two minutes over the stove at medium. I have some prosciutto here. I'm gonna fry that prosciutto. And then I'm going to thinly slice, like super, super thin slices of apple. Nice thick layer of 
pumpkin butter on each side. Next, we're gonna go in with some smoked turkey and just do a little layering action. The apple is gonna add some crunch, some sweetness. You could also do like some greens here as well. You could do pears. A pear would be really, really delicious. And then the star of the show, which makes this so good, is smoked Gouda. And it really complements all the sweetness and rounds it out. Add the crispy. Look how beautiful it got, like a beautiful seared crust on each side. Add that right on top and then close it down. And now we're gonna add it to the brown butter into the pan. I know this is kind of boring to make just pumpkin butter, but you guys know I love staples. I love a recipe that can be turned into a million things. And so this pumpkin butter can be used so many different ways. I totally saved the best for last. There's the super cheesy part that I just, I have to go in on. This looks so good. Time to taste test some homemade pumpkin butter on a beautiful sandwich with turkey, apples, crispy prosciutto, and smoked gouda. Mm. This is legendary. That is the conclusion to the best ever three squash Mediterranean diet recipes. We have a little bit of everything. You got a panino, you got a quiche, you got a beautiful stuffed squash and rice combination. You've seen squash in so many different ways in something pureed and then just itself it's beautiful roasted delicious self so i really really hope you got some kind of inspiration from this video pick up a squash maybe that you've never chosen to cook with before have fun in your kitchen please let me know in the comments below what you loved most which recipe you loved most what you would change what you would add what you would do differently how you would take your riff off of these recipes and also if you have any questions on the mediterranean diet or the mediterranean lifestyle what recipes you'd like to see from me or questions you have about any recipes or food in general. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I hope you create a very, very zestful day. Ciao.